It doesn't look like they take kindly to visitors after hours. It's not like I'm going to steal dust and rubble. Just a quick peek. In my 19th year, on my own initiative and expense, I raised an army. What's that over there? That helmet you see? It's yours. I built the Temple of Mars. As a guard, life was rather uneventful at most times. Not as grandiose as most would expect. Keeping order during hearings, vetting anyone who sought to enter, and cleaning up. That was how a guard spent most of his time on duty, with only a few exceptions. Where am I? Is this- I often saw Augustus walking into this part of the forum. Never sure for what, but it always looked like he was contemplating something. It must have weighed heavily on his shoulders, being the successor to the murdered Caesar. I guess he derived inspiration from being surrounded by icons of his mortal and divine ancestors. This temple is dedicated to Mars. There are also another four important figures represented here. Fortune, Rome, Palatine, and Tiber. I drove the men who slaughtered my father into exile with a legal order, punishing them for their crime. And afterwards, when they waged war on the state, I defeated them in two battles. These statues of victory represent that. The Temple of Mars was built in fulfillment of a vow made before the Battle of Philippi, undertaken by Augustus to avenge his father's murder. Augustus might have been a shrewd politician and a cunning war strategist, but he never neglected pious life. He placed a lot of weight on his spiritual beliefs and was convinced that Mars played a part in his successes. After Mark Antony helped Augustus avenge Caesar's death, Unless you held a position, he erected a great number of public buildings. The most prestigious was a forum containing the Temple of Mars the Avenger. The reason for building a new forum was the rapid increase in population and the number of cases to be tried in the courts. So, a law was passed declaring that cases should be tried there and judges chosen at random. You must complete your duties for the night and have the forum ready at dawn when the day's activities begin. I'm sure I can use this. This tablet documents a dispute between a Roman and a foreigner. This sort of hearing was overseen by a magistrate known as Praetor Peregrinus. Pretty amazing, if you think about it. This is an invitation. With enough of these wax tablets, one might be able to reconstruct what the forum looked like. This tablet doesn't belong here. Best take it to the Eastern Archive. Immigration issues date back to ancient Rome, and they happened all the time. Foreigners, known as Peregrini, especially wanted Roman status. Such cases decided there must have been a dispute about slaves happening today. Disputes over the trade of slaves are known as emptil venditio. Fiducia cum creditora were financial cases. Siblings clashing over inheritance, unpaid debts between business partners. These were not so Roman citizens would argue over matters of status, especially if they were sons of liberty. The case of Petronia Eusta versus there. Now all the tables are clear for tomorrow's consultations. All documents are held in two archives. This, the Peregrinus Archive, and the Urban Archive, which you may have noticed is closed for construction at the moment. The Senator's Pallium is somewhere in here. You have to find Augustus saw a lot of what he was doing reflected in the story of Romulus. In their own ways, both were founders of Rome. Just as Augustus did with some of the other Sumi Virdi, he also tried to link himself to Romulus. During public talks, Augustus frequently referred to him to align his intentions with those of this mythological founder. It is a little curious fact. Oh, a doll. I can recall all sorts of attempts to inf- That's the kind of collar that slaves used to wear. Perhaps a debt slave. People were not sent to prison. Romans simply paid fines. 
while the female lawyers were not... Better take the Senator's pallium back to the guard post for safekeeping. This wax tablet is an invitation such as those sent out to both the accuser and the accused. They must have met here today in front of this statue of Diana Lucifer. Now the senator could just come and pick it up. These senators always receive special treatment. Not everyone was treated equally in the eyes of the law. The poorer you were, the harsher the fines and lower the compensations. I've seen a good deal of people being almost thrown into ruin because of the tough calls by the Praetors. I was High Priest, Augur, one of the fifteen for the performance of rites. One of the seven of the sacred feasts, brother of Arvis, fellow of Titus and Fischl. Yes, in fact Augustus was the head of state, army and government. These should be lit. I'm sure there's something I can use to light them somewhere around here. The Senate enrolled me in its order by laudatory resolutions when Gaius Panzer and Olus Hertius were consuls. They assigned me the place of a consul in the giving of opinions and gave me the Imperium. At the time, Marcus Marcellus and Lucius Aruntius were consuls. The people and the Senate agreed to grant me total dictatorship, both when present and absent. I turned this offer down. Augustus was not a god, but he wanted to be depicted as a genius, the protector of the Senate and the state. Can you see the resemblance between this statue and Augustus himself? The tribunal needs rearranging before the night is over. These chairs are not placed here merely for the audience. Trials have jury panels, and a serious case could require up to 75 members in the jury. Chairs like this are where they sit. Looking at the state of this place, today's case must have been a particularly controversial one. This place is overrun by people every day. Don't let this mess surprise you. As vigils in the forum, it's our duty to make this place ready for tomorrow's trials. This chair is where the Praetor delivers his final verdict. When out in the forum, it was always easier to catch the preliminary phase of a trial rather than the trial itself. I was called in countless times to keep public order while the contesting parties gave their testimonies to the Praetor under a hanging decree. What is this huge base doing here? Looks like it's a space meant to hold something. It doesn't look like it's quite finished. There are tools still scattered around. Sharp! This space is where one of the most magnificent statues of Augustus will sit. It's a sizable statue fashioned out of bronze that depicts him in a chariot led by four horses. It will be magnificent when finished. The city was not built in a manner deserving of the Empire's grandeur. It was liable to inundations by the Tiber as well as to fires. Under his administration, the improvements were such that he boasted that he founded it out of brick, but left it of marble. Do you see those intricate decorations? All it takes to see how much Augustus' empire was flourishing is to look at all the exotic materials he was bringing back to Rome to build this forum. I was unwilling to take my colleague's place as priest. 
When the people offered me to take vows as my father had done before me, I refused it. This changed, however, after several years. With my father's passing, I finally accepted to be ordained. Temple-related matters are usually in the hands of priests, sacrifices, the cella, and the lot. But, as so happens, sometimes we're left to clean up the mess at night. The statues that line the porticos of the forum and tribunals are surely a work of art, aren't they? But there were a lot more than that. Augustus had this hall of fame, designed with a clear intention in mind, to pay homage to all the mortal and divine kings and founders, the Sumi Virdi, who played a part in building Rome. The names on that sigillum, I've heard them somewhere before. Ah yes, they were involved in a case of business fraud. I remember the preliminary hearing held in front of the Edictus. There was a lot of commotion. They probably dropped the ring when they rushed off to the tribunal. When cases were too difficult or tricky, a preliminary hearing wasn't enough to settle them. That's when both parties involved were taken to either the Orbanus, if they were both Romans, and the Peregrinus, if one side was a foreigner. There, a praetor, as well as a jury, were called in. This door should be closed. Better go inside to check that nothing's missing. The statue you see represents Mars together with Venus. Venus had a prominent position in Roman religion. When Augustus posthumously honored his adoptive father, Caesar, by divining him, he wanted to establish his divine lineage as well, making him untouchable. One more thing he did was to establish connection with Venus through her son, the hero and descendant of Romulus and Remus, Aeneas. I defeated our enemies in Spain, Gaul and Dalmatia, and recovered military standards our former leaders had lost to them. The Parthians had hoarded spoils and standards of as many as three Roman armies. I compelled them to return them all. I also persuaded them to humbly seek out the friendship of the Roman people, which they did. Since then, I have had all standards placed on display in the Temple of Mars Altor. I brought back war spoils totaling above 100 million sesterti during my exploits on foreign soil. I had everything consecrated before offering them up in the capital, as well as the temples of Julius, Apollo and Vesta. All seems to be as it should. Leave the temple and lock the door behind you. The Temple of Mars was built in fulfillment of a vow made during the War of Philippi, undertaken by Augustus to avenge his father Caesar's murder. He ordered that the Senate always assemble there to deliberate about wars and triumphs, that thence should be dispatched all those who were sent into the provinces in the command of armies, and that in it, those who returned victorious from the wars lodged the trophies of their triumphs. You have completed all that was required of you. I hope this encounter with history has given you new insight into Augustus, a truly pro No one will ever believe what's happened to me. One thing's for sure, I'll never trespass on any ruins again. <laughs>